कादरी जी मॉनिटर दैट चैनल मैंने हाँ स्टार्ट किया है अभी लेटेड स्टार्ट यहाँ पे लाइव कादरी जी मॉनिटर दैट चैनल ओके होल्ड ऑन दैट्स इट्स माय इट्स म्यूट दैट आउट ओके ऑल राइट okay uh very good evening to everybody once again welcome back to the animation society of india's uh, ongoing sessions lovely to have all of you here on a sunday evening saturday evening sorry i got the day wrong um we have with us once again uh, cc uh, from uh, whistling woods he's cto at whistling woods and uh, uh, head of uh, emerging technology uh, after a wonderful session last uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, where we talked about uh, another very interesting subject uh, today we have got a, a, him talking about the narrative aspect in 360 vr uh, most importantly we want to understand uh, from him uh, what vr and 360 vr has uh, to offer for uh, filmmakers and as a technology uh, you know uh, how is it relevant to the changing times uh, for the movie going experience so uh, cc without uh, you know i'm sure uh, the introductions have already been done uh, many times over those of you who want to know more about him in detail uh, our website has got a link about him uh, in short cc is not a technical guy he is a chartered accountant and somehow uh, caught up with this uh, maze of technology and entertainment and cinema and uh, all sorts of things uh, nothing to do with the yeah, you know uh, with the chartered accountancy and which is very encouraging and very interesting so uh, cc take it forward and uh, let's let's dive straight into it what exactly are we going to be talking about today uh, and uh, we will take questions as we go along Uh, please type your questions in the chat box and uh, we'll moderate them for cc uh, we are live on youtube so those of you who uh, you know are unable whose friends are unable to join us on zoom uh, you can you know guide them to the animation society youtube channel uh, where this is being live streamed a uh, recording of this will also be available for those who missed the live session so you can always refer back to it again a uh, big shout out thanks to whistling woods for supporting this uh, these uh, you know events and also to xp pen india uh, that's about all the formality that i'm going to get into cc all yours thanks um thanks tony um hello hello everybody um so like uh, tony said um i am not i don't come from a, from traditionally from a technology or a creative uh, place by a uh, profession i'm a chartered accountant i'm also the business head of whistling woods um and i had the emerging media vertical uh, for the school as well so over the last i mean say i would like to say 15 odd years um i have been part of several new and first uh, innovative steps that uh, whistling woods has taken in various fields of emerging media so whether it's digital cinematography or you know the youtube space and the youtube educator lab or um stereoscopic filmmaking stereoscopy as a concept um vr and virtual production so what i'm going to do today what we're going to do today is i'm going to take you through a uh, what is cinematic vr right what is virtual reality what is fiction or non fiction narrative content creation for 360 video uh, just to give you a broad sense of <clears throat> what the world is what that what the virtual reality world is i mean you hear a lot of jargon today you you see a lot of news you see facebook doing things with meta you see lots of vr headsets around you see people wearing vr headsets you know hanging around at malls and you know having uh, you know people do some kind of vr experiences so we'll we'll like get a good sense of what that is and what the large industry and what the uh, big picture industry for cinematic vr will end up becoming right so let me share my screen. 
between uh, wait something went wrong one sec yeah okay Right. So, uh, we're going to talk today about fiction, uh, both narrative as well as utilitarian, as well as nonfiction storytelling in 360 VR. We'll also look at um, the, the virtual reality world as a whole and, you know, uh, what it is that it, what, what does it mean when uh, we have VR as part of our life, right? So, Before we get to uh, VR, I'm going to do a little bit of a couple of minutes on uh, Digital India, just to give you guys a broad sense of what is the world that we are playing it in, playing in, right? So we are the world's second largest internet using country. Uh, we have 500 million plus broadband users. We had 400 million plus mid to high level smartphones, which is 40% of all phones. Uh, we are the world's largest per capita weekly video watching country. We're at nine to 10 hours a week right now. And nine out of 10 OTT consumers watch content on their cell phones. Uh, mobile data cost has crashed from 16 rupees per GB to about three rupees per GB. And uh, per capita data consumption is obviously doubled, uh, more than doubled actually. So this is just to give you some broad landscape, right? And what has the digital content ecosystem's journey been from 2012 to 2020? So 2012 is when you can broadly say that, you know, uh, content on the cell phone really started with and 3G started to come around a little before that. But, you know, 2012 is when uh, it kind of got through. Um, so you have, as of today, you have widespread fiction or narrative content has emerged in all content business models. So advertising video on demand, subscription video on demand, both business models, right? Three generation of cinematic VR content creators have emerged from the first lot of generation of the AIB and the TVFs to the second generation when we had a massive slew of uh, non-anglicized content creators to today when you have an equal amount of fiction and non-fiction content. Um, and uh, a significant amount number of platforms that have come in. You have, uh, you know, digital content today is now widely included in all awards or festival inclusion. You have dedicated digital content film festivals, actually, and you have a sorted tech pipeline. And there is a reason why I'm putting this out because, you know, we will be revisiting this uh, right at the end of the presentation. Uh, so these are the four content viewing platforms, right? The four viewing platforms and multiple types of content that exist. So there's theatrical. So if you essentially plot all your content consumption platforms on two axes on value and volume, right? So theatrical is highest value at this point of time and lowest volume. So the fewest number of people go and watch cinema. And uh, this is, you know, it's the most expensive thing to watch. Uh, to consume content. Um, the arrow is where uh, this is likely to go over the next five years. Premium OTT, it's uh, you know much cheaper to watch as compared to theatrical, um, and you know hence quite a few people watch it, and it's likely to go. It's premium OTT is is going to be the one that's really going to explode and come into the fourth quadrant. You have freemium OTT, which is uh, you know something is free, something is paid for. So some free stuff, some paid stuff. So this is where it is. Uh, obviously, much lower in cost and higher in volume. And this is where it's likely to go. And then you have uh, TV. TV is uh, pretty much tapped out when it comes to cost. But uh, as when it comes to volume, I mean, it's not growing at all. Um, in fact, people are cutting the cord. Uh, but the cost of subscription will go up, right? As in, in days to come. And then free OTT, obviously, you know, cost will remain the same, which is pretty much your internet access cost, which is really low. And the number of users will go up as more and more and more India starts to go online. 
So what is the potential for VR today? So India has a huge potential market. Over 300 million VR ready consumers, which basically means that 300 million people have mobile phones that are VR ready. We need to create the first generation of cinematic VR filmmakers. So all fiction or narrative content or experiences for VR are at a nascent stage. There is no academic pedagogy or curriculum that exists for it. Well, it does, but only at Whistling Woods, not in a widespread, uh, you know, not across the world or not across the country. Hence, we need to write the curriculum for cinematic VR and then educate. So that's the, 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 the potential at this point of time. Now, before we get to VR, I want to uh, ask you guys a question. We need to understand our senses, right? So the question is, how many senses do we have? Right? Uh, feel free to answer. Feel free to uh, unmute yourself and, and, and answer or type in the chat box. How many senses do we have? Five, five plus one, okay. Five, okay. Okay, so uh, among other things, uh, this particular question and the answer to this particular question has been the biggest failures of uh, our education system, high school education system, because um, the correct answer is, We have 27 senses. And so the, the obvious answer is five. Everybody says sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. Uh, but we have 27 senses. And the reason we're talking about it is because immersion is a sense. We'll get to it. So in addition to these five organ-based senses, so sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste are organ-based senses. We have four perception-based senses and 18 other organ-based senses. When we say four perception-based senses, which basically means that Medical science today is not qualified to understand why we have those senses. So they're saying, Achha, ye perception hai. Humne, matlab, ye, hamare syllabus ke hai, humko nahi aata. So this has been put to the, to the mind, right? Most people know what the brain is. Nobody knows what the mind is. So it's been put into the column of the mind is the mind based sense, right? Now your four perception based senses that we have. So time is a perception based sense. We don't know how we sense time, uh, but we do sense time. Um, uh, agency control. So, you know, I don't know, many people are afflicted by this horrible uh, condition called motion sickness, where if somebody else is driving the car and you're sitting in it, you get motion sick. But if you yourself are driving the car, uh, you don't get any motion sickness. Uh, that is a sense uh, called agency. So people who have an overdeveloped a uh, sense of agency when that sense is not uh, fulfilled um, they end up you know throwing up and feeling whatever horrible right and uh, then you have uh, familiarity which is uh, deja vu so um, most people would uh, you know have experienced this at some point and then we sense gravity we don't know how we sense gravity but we do and then there's a bunch of organ based senses i don't want to get too much into this uh, but to understand that VR, a significant component of VR is about the mind and it's about understanding senses, right? So similarly, immersion is a sense. Now, um, the impact of immersion on other senses has caused science to treat it as a sense more than anything else. Even though it's yet to be classified, whether it's perception based or organ based senses. So there's two kinds of immersion. There is physical immersion or which is also called technical immersion. So if you are in a swimming pool, then you are physically immersed in a pool or you are physically currently immersed in the room that you are in, in the air that you are around. And the second one is cognitive immersion where your mind is immersed, right? So cognitive immersion further has many types. So there is something called spatial immersion, uh, which is where you feel like you are part of the the space that you are seeing or that you are listening to or that you are experiencing, right? So excellent, uh, well shot cinematic shots or, you know, if you have excellent, well crafted sound that transform, that transports you to the edge of a waterfall or something like that, 
right that's spatial immersion when you feel like you're part of the of some other space there's temporal immersion where uh, you feel like you're part of a storyline that you are witnessing that you are reading or watching or something like that a uh, temporal immersion is what leads to things like uh, anticipation in your mind and uh, you know it uh, temporal immersion of the mind is what enables or what causes a uh, shock value right so when you have a sudden horror shock or suddenly when you have a any kind of twist that happens in a storyline and you're like oh like you know it it you feel it is because your mind is temporarily immersed and uh, it is anticipating how the story is going to move forward and when it doesn't move in that way right so that's the concept of temporal immersion spatial temporal immersion is both when you're both spatially immo- immersed and in the storyline and emotional immersion is when you feel what you are observing watching witnessing uh, but you don't know why right so if a child is crying on screen or if a mother and child are being separated you feel like crying lots of people do end up crying as well on uh, in in cinemas primarily it happens so um, again people who have an overdeveloped or well developed sense of emotional immersion which is a you know combination of spatio temporal and mirror neuron syndrome and other sen- other areas of cognitive science that can't really get into now um, so the the uh, you know one of the reasons why uh, i talk about this and to also you know explain to people and help them understand is this is not very complicated right i am a chartered accountant by profession and i could study enough of cognitive science on my own as well as help of some others to understand all this so don't think that it's some weird bizarre uh, you know uh, uh, abstract concept right it is very much understandable so uh going back to yeah so let's uh, you know now that we've done sense let's look at content versus experience so over the past 5 years or so people are no longer happy with content right they want experiences so what what does that mean essentially what they want is they want the content to be accessible affordable authentic convenient cool customized discoverable entertaining obviously fun funny participative personalized all these things on the left and as usual the market has responded to these demands and has created a bunch of enabling technologies on the right which are convert converting the from it from a content to an experience to a user experience to a consumer experience right vr is one of those so it's one of those natural progressions of you know of human kind when we you know we stepped out of the cave and you know crossed the mountain and crossed the river and you know kind of made content and entertained each other and so on and so forth just part of natural human evolution okay first things first don't get lost in the jargon right ar vr mr xr just don't don't get lost in the jargon right now there's way too much jargon floating around it's very simple you have three states you have the reality state where you are sitting on your sofa in a room then you have augmented reality where a part of the digital world a world that isn't real is brought into and overlaid on top of the real world right so you have now you have this plant and you have the dinosaur from the jurassic world virtual reality where which is completely artificial is when you are blocked off from the real world and you are transported into a world into the dinosaur's world right which doesn't exist so these are the three states that you can be in of reality you are matter reality augmented reality or virtual reality mixed reality is a combination of uh, you know of virtual reality and augmented reality a little bit of that there is uh, X, xr which is extended reality which apparently is you know all these things put together but basically ignore all that there are only three states of uh, reality that that can exist and that can happen right that said what's most important is to understand in vr is degrees of freedom and in this i'm going to move to the ppt to help 
you guys understand that because the PPT is what enables right so any movement that uh, happens in content right where the camera or the viewing mechanism moves is called a degree of freedom so you have the first three degrees of freedom where the camera or whatever the capture mechanism does not move itself but it moves along three axes so your pitch and roll right where it moves left right up down like moves up down and uh, uh, it, it rolls along the, the z-axis, right? And then you have the next three degrees of freedom where the actual object itself, the camera or whatever, the viewing mechanism or the viewer itself, himself or itself moves up and down, left, right, front, back. <coughs> so depending on how many degrees of freedom are being used in content creation, VR content is either 3 DOF or 6 DOF, and it's either room scale VR or it's single point fixed point vr right so the first three is fixed point if you have all six then it's room scale vr now what are the applications of vr and i'm going to kind of quickly uh, not spend too much time on this so there's generally two types there's functional and there's narrative right so functional vr is stuff that you are already doing and now you are doing in vr because you know it kind of makes things better so one is simulations so flying, driving, all these things, which, you know, were anyway happening. They were happening in flat screen. Uh, they are now happening in VR. Remote access, so medicine, drilling, which were again happening on flat screen. Uh, so, you know, robotic surgery or medicine surgery, medical surgery in remote, which was happening on flat screen is now happening in VR. Um, mental health, you had mental health. Uh, images that were and visuals and videos that were created. Now they're being done in VR, education, gaming, marketing, all these things. And then the second part is narrative where there is a whole lot of content being created in VR, right? So if you see the last four, they're pretty much the same because these are four areas where uh, VR is used both as a, uh, as a tool, as a functional tool, the workflow pipeline as well as there is new content being created in using VR, right? So cinematic VR is the fiction or non-fiction narrative content. You have live VR, which is live streaming of concerts and sports. Uh, you have mental health. Uh, there's a lot of unique, innovative content being created for mental health. Uh, education, obviously, a lot. We'll see some examples of education. Uh, gaming, the significant amount of VR gaming. I mean, I don't even need to talk about it. And then there is a lot of marketing. Marketing is where VR is used uh, as uh, of is used the most at this point of time, and it also comes across as the most gimmick, gimmicky and the most uh, the least effective kind of application of VR at this point of time. Right? So, what is cinematic VR? Let's come to the main uh, topic now. Any emerging technology or any emerging uh, media you, you approach, you approach it using four criteria. You look at it technology, you look at it from the business side, you look at it from the content side. And finally, if you are part of the problem solving mechanism, so if you are a first mover, if you are an early adopter, you have to solve problems, right? Whether you like it or no. And that's how we have approached it as well. Uh, so I'm going to focus on the, the first three more, less on the problem solving, because, you know, that's something that we've done as a U.S. consumers and users don't really care so much about it. So first is tech. Now, uh, there is an organization called Gartner, uh, the Gartner Hype Curve for Emerging Technologies. So Gartner uh, creates these this hype curve every year. They release it. Um, they've been doing it for 40 odd years, and it's really, really accurate right so it has five stages if you look at the bottom there is the innovation trigger there is the peak of inflated expectations there's the trough of disillusionment slope of enlightenment and plateau of productivity right and every new emerging technology goes through this curve whether you one likes it or no a lot of technologies die at the trough of disillusionment they do not they never emerge out of it so stereoscopic content creation 3D filmmaking kind of died there. Quite a few things died there, right? 
uh, 3D TV also kind of died there. Um, but VR has come out of it. So this is the Gartner hype curve for 2017. Now, generally, this is two to five years out, right? So um, the, the, the first phase, the innovation trigger is about three years or so. Peak of inflated expectation is generally lasts a year, year and a half. Trough of disillusionment, another couple of years. And then uh, there is a two to five year uh, launch uh, before it hits kind of mainstream. So um, this is what it was in 2017. Uh, by 2018, VR had come out of the Gartner hype curve already. So it had come out of the trough of disillusionment and uh, uh, kind of already hit the plateau of productivity. So you could look at uh, 2018 as, as year zero. So by 2023 or 2024, uh, VR will be mainstream. 2018 also is when VR stopped being emerging technology anymore and became emerged and neither it was hype, right? So what is the, the uh, surest sign that a technology has emerged is when you have a stabilized technology pipeline, right? Where your acquisition, production, post-production, distribution, and playback viewing is all stabilized. And it has. Today, you have cameras, which have from 2 to 16 sensors or lenses for both stereoscopic as well as monoscopic acquisition. Right? Um, stereoscopic is, is, is the kind of technical term of what we broadly call 3D. When we go and watch a 3D movie, you're essentially watching a stereoscopic content. Monoscopic is where you know you don't have that left eye, right eye separation. Uh, you have in-camera stabilization that the tech pipeline throws in. You have in-camera stitching. Um, then you have your standard production, post-production. So you're both local and cloud stitching. This is fine stitching. This is finishing. You have your edits and edit plus effects pipeline is sorted. Uh, Adobe has its own pipeline. Apple has its pipeline as well. Almost all software is now allowed 360 video editing. Um, and then you have finishing or exporting to the required format after doing all the bugs and straps and supers and picture in picture and all that, right? So it's got all the bells and whistles. Now, there's two ways of distribution. So there's download video and playback and there's streaming, which is exactly how digital content is distributed. And then you have playback viewing devices. So you have head mounted displays. So there are headsets for cell phones where you can put your cell phone in and watch. There, is a, there are wireless connected head mounted displays, which are also called standalones. Uh, this is the fastest growing, the largest growing segment. It will be the fastest and largest growing segment. Oculus Rift, which are the tethered and wired. So Rift and Vive are the tethered connected to computers uh, headsets. So you have the PSVR, which is only on the VR at this point of time, only on the PlayStation. And there are many more, many, many more standalones as well as tethered headsets that are coming in. Uh, uh, just a, a snapshot of your cameras and mics for acquisition. So you've got uh, one by Zoom and one by uh, Sennheiser uh, on the right. These are your spatial audio ambisonic recording mics. On the left, you've got your camera sets, which uh, you know go from the two lens ones to the six lens uh, cameras. And then you have the, the one in the middle, which is a joint venture between red and red cameras and Facebook. They're coming up with this monster 16 uh, sensor or 16 lens camera. So 16 8K sensors. It's been in development for about a couple of years now. And, you know, they're expecting it to be in development at least for another year or so. Um, so this is your acquisition range at this point of time. Um, I'm not getting into brand so much because it doesn't matter. Your headset range. So you have uh, the basic Google Daydream, which is your you know mobile headset. You have your Samsung Gear again, a branded uh, mobile headset. You have Oculus, PlayStation, and Tethered ones. So that that is as far as tech goes. Your tech pipeline is sorted. Now let's look at the business side of things, right? So if you look at the uh, the all the numbers, and this is where you'll see a, a, a most positive. Uh, sign. So if you look at how it grew from 2016 to 2021, now this, the, the graph on top, top left graph is as of Jan 2020, right? So as of Jan 2020, 
they were predicting a uh, 19 that 2021 will be a 19 billion dollar consumer revenue uh, uh, market which is a combination of hardware and software what it actually ended up becoming right was a 30 billion dollar market primarily because of the lockdown and pandemic also because Facebook decided to get serious and ByteDance decided to get serious about it and put in a decent amount of money. Also, a lot of other things uh, developed. So essentially, just within two years, the entire uh, kind of ecosystem almost had a 100%, 80% or so um, correction on the upside. And then going forward over the next four years is expected to be almost a $300 billion market right so you're looking at uh um uh, uh you know as you kind of build out the the devices it'll go from about 13 million 13 and a half million in 2020 to about 115 million in 2026 and the the software we are just the software not the hardware market just the software which is which includes games as well as uh, content will be about 84 billion by 2028, right? A huge uh, CAGR between 21 and 28, right? So the small pink thing that you see in 21, which is actually much bigger, that's going to become about 84 billion by 2028, global. Now, a lot of this is backed on some, um, some very strong uh, research. So there was, I mean, yes, this is about four years old, but I mean, there is an update to this, which I have, which is still coming out. Uh, Greenlight did a, a massive global survey on uh, AR, VR, on consumer sentiment and consumer interest. So they asked people, do you want to consume X content, this content in VR? And the whole world, everybody who was sampled said, 75% of them said, yes, I want to watch movies or videos in VR. Whereas those people who are already owners of VR hardware, that means they had consumed VR on a regular basis. They actually, 87% of them said that we want to consume movies and videos in VR, which means that VR isn't a letdown, right? People are expecting and getting what they are expecting. Live events, the, the spread is pretty much the same, even though a much uh, smaller percentage wants to watch it primarily because people have not experienced. So it's, unable for them to understand what a live concert in VR looks like, right? Or feels like. Now, separate, remember to separate this from the metaverse, right? We will get to the metaverse and what's happening there in a bit in Q&A. Uh, but this is you being in the first row of, a, uh, I don't know, U2 concert or any concert in the world, right? And actually putting on your headset and being there for a couple of hours or whatever, an hour or so. And the third one is live sports. Would you want to watch live sports in VR? So there, there the difference is actually almost 20% between the entire everybody and people who had actually consumed live sports in VR. And remember, this is 2018. So 2018, VR technology was, compared to today, shit. It was horrible, right? Headsets were not high quality. Uh, acquisition devices were not high quality. Despite that, you had a 75% plus interest in all three formats. So today, this number is expected to be about 95, 90, 90, 95%. And also, finally, we have proper competition in VR, right? For the longest time, it was one, two, one, two, chota, chota, chota companies that were doing some stuff. Now you have the three big boys or, you know, big girls or big whoever uh, who have gotten involved. So. Uh, Facebook as part of their meta and even before the meta actually acquired Oculus, right? So that's on the left. Then you have ByteDance, which is China, uh, TikTok, owners of TikTok acquired Pico and Apple has acquired NextVR. So uh, while NextVR is not a hardware uh, manufacturer, they are a distribution company uh, and they are a, a streaming, a VR streaming company, but they, uh, they, they have done some work in hardware as well. Whereas Apple themselves are doing work in hardware. So finally, over the next two or three years, you will start to see three proper, nice ecosystems emerge. Just like you have ecosystems in almost all other areas, uh, you will have ecosystems in uh, VR as well, which will you know promote 
push we are in a big way and that is what will lead to vr content and business models in all five levels of vr so bottom of the pyramid is mobile plus headset that will be your highest volume and lowest value because your headsets will be the cheapest and everybody already has a mobile phone uh, it's just the mobile phones will need to be tweaked so that they can be viewed from 3 inches away from the eyes and uh, they don't give off heat and they don't you know kind of they're not a biological hazard um <clears throat> the next one will be wireless connected hmds which you know will drop in terms of value already and uh, you will have a significant amount of volume in them so that's where they will end up then you have tethered hmds which will be connected to either pods or uh, home uh, devices or playstations or gaming consoles um then you have tethered plus seated plus multi sensory that's what you know ar rahman is trying to do with his uh, vr movie la musk and lots of other people are trying to do intel has done it with uh, first man and intel has done it with quite a few other experiences and the top of the pyramid will be location based vr experiences so if uh, if any of you do have the chance to go to la or vegas or uh, i think it's in the it's in dubai as well now london as well uh, go to this place called the void v o i d it is a hardware a uh, cum software virtual space that they've created where they have multiple experiences that people go through so you're wearing a like a harness like a vr uh, headset along with a full body suit harness and you can do various things like you know there's a star wars experience where you go and shoot storm troopers and there's a ralph breaks the internet experience and there's some other stuff and there's a um, i don't know it's quite a few experience about 20 25 different experiences that you can do and uh, it's fantastic and uh, people are willing to pay you know upwards of 50 dollars for a uh, 8 minute to 10 minute experience uh, so i think you know that's going to be your broad business models now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take vr cinematic vr on hmds only on head mounted displays wireless connected hmds and plug in it plug it into the original content business models that we had seen right so this is where it is where you know your theatrical premium freemium that one this is where immersive content sits today it's uh, on the left of theatrical so uh, almost as expensive as theatrical um but consumed by far fewer people and as the it kind kind of starts to evolve the arrow this is where it will go so it will end up being slightly more expensive than premium ott um and uh, you know it will have a decent number of consumers right? so that's where it will end up at now the most crucial part all this is fine technology is okay dhanda is okay business is okay is all fine but if there is no good quality content if there is no content then what's the point of all this right there's all just empty boxes and numbers on an excel spreadsheet and on a graph right this is by far the most important aspect of virtual reality and this is the the way that uh, one approaches it or should approach it or should look at it you have to stop look at looking at it as an also right so people say that you know uh, there is a cinema there is television there is also vr no it is the fourth content consumption platform and you have to treat it like that so film cinema is what is called captive community viewing tv is non captive family viewing digital is non captive individual viewing and vr is captive individual view and this is the kind of nature that informs the kind of experiences one will have and the kind of content that gets created right so for the first time also when you look at platform viewing details the first time you have frameless content right where you're not restricted by the frame so it increases the immers immersion value of the content duration and structure will evolve as uh, you know things evolve um you know fiction content structure will also evolve where it will be primarily uh, it will be equal amount of stand alone and serial content which is very similar to digital ott the most important is the usp so what is it that's going to draw people into to consuming this content right so first things first cinema is a larger than life audio visual narrative spectacle television lends itself to appointment viewing so you know story character development 
Digital is individual. It's high concept. It's less formulaic, writing focused. So pace is critical because it's individual. So you're not being judged for what you watch. We are immersive and interactive is all we know, right? And slowly, slowly, more and more and more will come in, and you will have uh, uh, unique filmmaking styles will evolve, unique content characteristics will evolve, unique types of content will evolve, a good content duration uh, structure will evolve. Right, all these things will evolve over the next few years. My hypothesis, again, I may be incorrect, but this is what my hypothesis is: that VR, for the first time in history, will creating a value snacking content category to enable the same to be monetized. So, short fiction content, people have been trying to monetize it for since Kingdom Come, literally, for the, at least at least for the past decade. that short films will make money and they have never made money in no platform theatrical release karo put it online uh, you know get it directed by famous people nothing right it has never made money on its own primarily because people have this feeling of brevity they, they don't feel like they got enough so they don't really want to pay for it what vr will do is the impact of the immersion and the impact of even short format vr content will be so high that people wouldn't mind paying for it or subscribing to a, a, a platform or to a, 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 a i don't know a, a channel or a, a you know a, a, like a, a mechanism that delivers short fiction vr content to them every day or every week or every by every two weeks or you know twice a week whatever it is right so it will allow it to be monetized so there'll be value snacking where people are, will be willing to pay for short format content because of the immersive experience time will tell whether i'm proven right or no i don't know let's see oh good so this is uh, another uh, uh, content curve it's actually a psychology curve but it's applicable in uh, human interaction with all new experiences right so it essentially it's called the dunning kruger effect it uh, it maps confidence and knowledge skills on two axes so uh, bottom left when you have no knowledge no skill you have no confidence and uh, then you have like a little bit of knowledge skills you're still in the broadly in the ignorance phase but suddenly your confidence shoots through the roof and you know you're now on standing on top of mount stupid and uh, you know then you kind of learn a little bit more and then you realize that oh shit i actually didn't know anything and then you crash into the valley of despair then you know wisdom starts to set in and then you get on to the slope of enlightenment uh, you know on your way to becoming a guru or an expert this is where vr is right now right it's it's done the mount stupid it's come down the valley of despair lots of people have set up vr studios and have failed some of them have succeeded quite a few of them have succeeded many 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 more have failed so this is where vr is people have finally understood uh, kind of accepted what its goal use etc is going to be and where it's going to be used for and you know it's no longer that all pervasive thing that people used to say that boss vr to matlab cinema khatam television khatam digital content khatam none of that is going to happen it's going to find its place it's going to take its place among all the other content that exists okay so this is uh, a little complicated to understand but kind of important because uh, this is the core this forms the the fulcrum on which you even start to understand uh, immersive 360 content right so there are three levers to all content consumption all content creation and content consumption experience content creation and content uh, consumption are essentially two ends of the same pipe right one end is creation other end is is consumption so the three concepts are agency speed and emotion so let's look at the uh, uh, let's look at agency first right so agency essentially means control how much control does the consumer have over the content they are consuming so when you have no control over the content that you are consuming somebody else has made it somebody else has directed it a bunch of other people are acting on it you're just sitting watching it right it's film outside of the what the hell ha huh. 
So it's outside of the agency uh, bubble. Film, you can control the speed at which you are consuming it. And it is an emotional experience. But there's little or no agency involved. You have no control as a user, as a consumer. If you look at the game, there is very limited emotion. That is the emotion of victory or winning or you know whatever. And now with uh, Uncharted and some other games, they try and bring in drama and all that into the game. But largely it is a single emotion at best concept, piece of media, right? So limited emotion, but what the hell is happening? Why does this keep moving forward? So limited emotion, but you have full control over the content because the content literally dances to your tune in a game. And uh, you have control over at what speed you want to consume the content or experience the content. And the third is life, which is, you know, live, everything that's everyday life. You have no control over speed. You can't make life go faster or slower. You have to you know, just sit back and let it take its own time, faster or slower. But you do have full control over what you do in life and hence how you experience it. And it is an emotional experience, right? So these are the three elements that also go into cinematic VR content. And depending on how much each of these are pushed in or pulled out, the VR content is more game-like, is more narrative, film-like, or is more live. So live streaming. Uh, and that's really how you start to understand how to, you know, how to tinker around, how to use a little bit of the, the levers of cinematic VR content. Right, it's it's uh, it's slightly complex, and it I mean may take some time for you to understand this. I can this is available. I can put this up presentation up for you later to understand. But this is by far the crux. This the answer to this this question mark in the middle in red is where VR lives. Right, it's the confluence of agency, speed, and emotion when it comes to content. Now, uh, a little on the production side to just to understand production complexity of VR. So, you know, we've looked at the, 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 the conceptual and the narrative and the ideal, uh, whatever the, the pedagogical aspects of VR in the earlier slide. Now let's look a little more at reality, right? So if you have to produce VR content and you, 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 need, you want to know how complex to make it and how complex you can do it and hence what the budget should be, uh, there are three again, uh, aspects to look at. One is how where, how real is it? Reality, interaction, and movement. So if it is rendered or simulated, it takes a lot of time to create CG content and it's expensive as well. But if it's actual, if it's live, if you're just keeping a camera and shooting something, then not that complicated, right? Um, so second is interaction. So is it a passive observer or active observer? So is the viewer, is does the content uh, progression or does the content change based on uh, what the viewer is watching and how they're watching and you know does the the what the user doing change the content significantly right? does it stop it increase the speed reduce the speed change the content so on and so forth and what is the movement like is the viewer on a fixed point or is it free movement so three off or six off three degrees of freedom or six degrees of freedom right so more of the boxes at the bottom, the lower the production complexity, more of the boxes at the top, high production complexity, or you could have a combination of the three. You could have an actual but active observer and a fixed point or you know rendered simulated passive observer free movement. So it uh, depending on that, your complexity goes up and down and so does your budget, by the way. And the last part we come to is problem solving, but not going to focus so much on it just to quickly give you an overview of what it is that we've done. Right? So Felix and Paul is like the, you know, it's they're the Disney, they're the DreamWorks plus Disney plus Fox plus Warner plus everything put together. They're, they're big daddies right now of uh, cinematic VR content creation. Fantastic content, brilliant content. Uh, this is an internal uh, tech presentation by their CTO. Uh, 
uh, slide from that of you know, this is an incomplete running list of stuff to fix. This will always need to be fixed. And when you kind of crystallize the problems to solve when we are down, these are the problems to solve when we are thankfully, right? This is only our focus. The other people, you know, there's lots of companies, organizations, associations in the world who have, who will solve the other problems. These are the two things that Whistling Woods has tried to solve. One is content creation. So write the curriculum and second is build awareness. So, you know, what I'm doing right now and other things we've been doing workshops and we've been doing seminars on campus, et cetera, et cetera. So where are we now right? when it comes to cinematic VR and what next? So what are the key learnings along the way over the past three, four years? One is that a VR film quote in single quotes is actually an experience. It's not a film. So of which the story is just one part, but the story, visual, sound, immersion, interactivity, they're all parts of the experience. So you have to work on all of them during the writing. You can't write a VR film or a VR story, just like you would write a flat screen story. You can't, right? Because oftentimes the, the sound may be the, the thread that holds the story together because you don't know where the person is going to watch, where is the person is going to be looking as the story progresses. So, you, you know, in many cases, the sound kind of is uh, no matter where the person is looking, the sound is always playing and that holds the thread together. In some cases, it is interactivity. In some cases, it is the visuals where unless you're actually looking at a particular thing, the story just doesn't move ahead. Right? So you have to work on all of them during the writing. When you're writing your script, you actually write North, South, East, West. You're actually, uh, uh, you're actually writing what is happening in the front, back, left, right. right? Uh, at least in the initial stages, you should do that. Once you kind of get comfortable with it, then you don't need to, but initially you should. Cinematic grammar needs to be rewritten for all frameless content, immersive content. A, a deeper sense of immersion is needed for all filmmakers. They need to understand immersion better. Directing attention is a new craft that they need to learn, right? Because so far they've always had uh, the frame, so they've never needed to direct attention. And now they have. And so, uh, you know, they need to learn how to direct attention. Your viewer's eyes become your viewfinder and your frame. So there is no uh, framing, pre-framing that you can do. You have to cajole the viewer to looking where you want them to look in order to create the frame. And hence, you have to solve people's FOMO, fear of missing out. Because when they are in an immersive, frameless world and when they're looking at one place, some part of their brain is always going, what am I missing out? Is there something happening on the left, right or on the back that I'm missing out? So you have to solve people's FOMO. So you need to have intuitive filmmaking. Think of why and how you would look at something, why you would look to something. And every VR shot is a VFX shot. Every single VR shot is a VFX shot, right? So, you know, make best friends with your uh, VFX uh, artist. Uh, they are, you know, without doubt, the most crucial aspect of a VR shoot. And then there's um, some other fun thing. There is no such person as a VR expert that exists as of now. There are only five rules in VR. Don't bore people. So, you know, don't just experience without engagement. Don't just put them in the middle of an ocean and let them, you know, watch. Or stop putting them in roller coaster videos. Don't confuse people. Just because you have 360 degrees doesn't mean you have to put content everywhere. Don't, make, don't, don't give people whiplash. Don't make them, you know, move their neck all the time. Yeah. Don't make people vomit. Obviously, you should never make people vomit and back up your data because there's loads of it. Okay. So this is the, the VR ecosystem as it exists today. Now, what I'm going to do is you remember the, the digital OTT journey that I had, I had pitched at the beginning. I'm going to map that with how I see cinematic VR moving from 2021 actually to 2024. So, you know, widespread fiction narrative content will emerge. It's already started to emerge. There are film festivals that have dedicated VR film sections. Two generation of cinematic VR content creators will emerge over the next three years. So first one this year, and then uh, uh, about three years from now, there will be increased film festival inclusion, dedicated film VR film festivals already started to happen. Uh, Rotterdam, Toronto, Venice, they all have dedicated VR film festivals. A tech pipeline 
will be sorted just like it's been sorted for digital it will be sorted for vr as well so this is to give you a sense of what the evolution of digital content has happened in uh, 2013 uh, that is what will happen with uh, vr um, over the next four or five years and try and think and try and remember and imagine what uh, digital content used to be in 2013 pre 4g pre five inch oled mobile phone less than one percent of all content was consumed on the mobile today it's 70 percent as headsets start to get better as uh, 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 broadcast and streaming starts to get better and better um, you're going to have more and more and more vr content being consumed as headsets stop being a shoebox and become more sleek, you will actually have people who will, you know, today somebody boards a train in Mumbai, say in Bandra and goes to say church gate. That's about half an hour, 40, 40 minutes or so of a journey. They're watching one or two episodes on uh, their mobile of a serial of a series. Trust you me within five years, they'll be doing that on their VR headsets, sitting in the same place in the same train. Today, Oculus Quest 2 costs about 30,000 rupees, not very expensive as compared to a high-end phone. Um, and there is enough content available and it can be downloaded and, and, and watched in high quality, right? So as the geo glass evolves, as the next generation and the next generation of what, you know, what Mukesh Bhai is trying to do, what Mark Zuckerberg is trying to do, what White dance is trying to do what Apple is trying to do. As these things start to hit the market, you will start to see this evolve. Uh, the, the crux here is, will there be content, right? And who are the content creators? So that's essentially the, the big question. Now let's just see some content. I know it's a little, uh, I mean, I really don't know how I can show you VR content on, uh, A flat screen on Zoom, but I'm going to try. Uh, so, um, so this is a, a, a short fiction film that we had made. Uh, it's a horror thriller kind of film. I'm going to try and do my best to, to show you some stuff, but it's available on YouTube. I'll give you the link. You can go and uh, watch it. Supers, there are uh, say streaming. So again, yeah, internet is slow. So you can see there's supers that we've done. There's a lot of uh, work that has gone into it. You'll have to watch this online. Honestly, it's not, this is not the best way for me to show this to you. It's, it's really quite stupid.
and there's also a non fiction thing so we we shot the uh, the 2019 kumbh in uh, vr we have about 50 hours or so of kumbh footage so i'll try and show you some of that that's a little easier to watch because you at least know what you're looking for uh so here we've actually put nice big fat uh, supers because you know this is uh, meant for a lot of people who've never seen vr before so uh, they need to watch it ऐसा माना जाता है कि हर 144 वर्ष के अंतराल पर किंतु इतिहास में इसका पहला उल्लेख सातवीं शताब्दी में चीन देश से आए यात्री और अध्यता हुएन सांग ने किया है कुंभ मेला होकर पवित्र गंगा में स्नान महाकुंभ का पावन योग केवल पवित्र गंगा के इलाहाबाद तट पर सुशोभित होता है So yeah, a little bit of live VR. What uh, uh, sports uh, live VR looks like. Who needs to? So this is uh, basketball. So it's a uh, uh, you are at the half court. Um, this is one of the most uh, kind of profitable pieces things that have uh, that has happened by the NBA because now everybody can sit at the half court line and watch a game of basketball. um you can move uh, to behind each of the baskets based on where the action is shifting um and you know this is a in headset view so it's it's pretty good it's like it's like you are at the venue uh it's pretty good quality as well now this is very limited control so there's just uh, you know you you can just look around you can't you know you can move behind the basket there's an auto switch that happens when the based on where the the ball goes uh there is a slightly more complex uh, more uh, better structured um for for football that has been done by um sky vr as well as uh, playstation uh, as well as sky in um, in the uk for the english premier league so uh this is the an owners box experience so this is like you are sitting in the owners box this is what it look it would look like if you were in the owners box and just like you were in the owners box there's a, a broadcast feed that comes in because vr that doesn't have any zoom you cannot zoom in in vr so the broadcast feed which is the 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 close up feed that comes in uh, to a to a display that's built into the inside the vr frame right so if you look up you'll see the uh, the the broadcast feed with the close ups and the zoom you have controllers where you can you know move you can go from half uh, half line to behind each of the goals if you want using your uh, playstation controllers so there you go you're switching to say the left side uh, or the right side uh, you you know you get a good idea so the ball you know the action is moving here you can you know quickly teleport to and the end of each goal 
you can move to the other side and while you continue to get the broadcast feed inside now you are behind the other goal post so it gives a good idea you know you can watch it along with a friend so you know the avatar of the friend will appear on the left or the right and what it does is the the remaining 180 at the back at the owners box is there is a space available for branding so you know you can be, uh, that's how they do end up making some amount of their money through branding that happens and you know something that's playing on at the back just like it would be at the in an owners box experience so this is uh, sports vr and there's a couple of examples of functional vr in in education so i mean i want to quickly take you through this it's not uh, classroom not very uh, so this is stuff that you can do uh, where rather than actually you know showing people on screen you can have them wearing headsets and experiencing it gives much deeper learning uh, impact uh, to any kind of content so you, know, you can actually have them walk around or go into the pyramids uh this is what has been happening with the hololens in for medical education so they've been uh, you are able to now uh, using the hololens and using um hand and kind of you know gesture control you are actually able to study anatomy anatomy much better which you otherwise would have had to dissect all the time so it's easy for you to separate say all the systems of uh, the body um then you know look at bone understand fractures so it, it it's essentially a good uh, learning tool so it allows you to you know kind of do so it becomes both a, a teaching learning aid as well as you have created content in vr which is specific to uh, learning of a subject right so these kind of things you would have never been able to do otherwise you would always have to uh, rely on cadavers and actually dissection which you now can do in vr much easier and far more realistic right so these were some examples of uh, vr and uh last slide and then we're done today we use a combination thank you yes questions i don't know was that was that okay was that too much and i never i never know whether it's too much or not Uh, I try to be as comprehensive as possible. Try to cover it from all all angles, all areas. No, I'm sure uh, people have found uh, you know enough material over here which has kind of piqued interest. So, uh, thanks a lot for putting together such a comprehensive uh, you know kind of presentation. So, uh, Adi has asked a question. VR yeah. is a resource intensive industry. Creating and consuming VR content requires high end hardware, large amounts of reliable high speed internet. uh no actually now your high end what you call high end vr headset costs 30000 rupees um the indian ones uh, cost uh, about between 10 and 15000 and this is 4k per eye so it's not it's not really that expensive right it, it for for streaming you need 4g for sure um but otherwise even a 20 mbps connection at home on wifi is good enough for streaming uh technology has evolved where uh, what they've done is it's called foveated viewing so what you are watching is essentially what is sent to you in high quality and everything else is uh, in low quality and as you are turning to look around um you know high quality content is is coming in and what you're not watching starts to become low quality so it's not it's not it's neither expensive nor do you need high speed internet you don't need energy for processing and all that yes you need a lot of storage because it's huge a uh, huge literally huge right so um there isn't so much of an environmental effect at this point of time uh when it comes to anxiety actually vr is what is used to treat anxiety the most the number one use of vr right now is 
I mean, and so the so telling statement on humanity that the number one use of VR right now is pornography, and uh, number two use is to treat uh, PTSD, right? So uh, and to treat uh, burn victims, medical usage. So uh, what they found is uh, third degree burns is on a pain scale is uh, level eight. Um, with medication, it is brought down to level four. But even level four is too much for a, a human to be conscious and survive the pain. So what ends up happening is they have to be uh, put under and put in a medically induced coma. So uh, you know that ends up with you know less oxygen to the brain and so on and so forth. Uh, what they have discovered is they put people in a VR headset with you know images of snow and sounds of the you know snowy icy wind and all that it actually reduces the pain scale from four to two where a person can remain conscious can have uh, does not uh, uh, you know can bear the pain so that's what they've been doing they've been using it to treat a lot of um, post war ptsd is being used to treat uh, uh, is being treated with uh, vr and with vr content essentially ptsd is where a person is unable to remember a traumatic experience without reliving it. So the body undergoes the same trauma that uh, it went through when it first experienced it, just when a person remembers it. So the idea is to enable people to experience that, that traumatic incident again and again and again without the body actually feeling it. So it's able to, uh, to get over PTSD much, much faster. So, uh, uh, I mean, the... There is little or no negative uh, footprint for environment when it comes to VR. In fact, at this point of time, the, the biggest environment uh, footprint negative impact to environment is happening with Bitcoin and with cryptocurrencies, the amount of energy that's being used to mine them. Right. So, yeah. So it won't affect the success of VR. Okay. There's another question from Suhail. Uh, if, if, uh, you are here. Let me try and highlight, uh, spotlight you, so that uh, if you can switch your camera on, uh, yeah. MCC can also see, uh, you know, where you are. Suhail, uh, I can see Suhail here, but his camera is off. Uh, his question That's is: fine. A huge number of people are claiming that metaverse would cause people to become antisocial by limiting physical interaction. What is your opinion on this? Um, so depends on what. If only physical interaction is considered uh, social behavior, then yes, but it's not. Social behavior is actually communication. It's not so much co-location. Uh, oftentimes there is co-location without communication, right? And that is as much antisocial as anything else. Metaverse is the essentially, is the way, where, is what content has been going over the last 50 years. So if you see content over the last 50, 60 years, we have tried to bring the viewer, the user inside the content as much as possible. You know, going from small screen to large screen, adding surround sound, uh, stereoscopy, Dolby Atmos now, right? So you're trying to draw the user in. in the With the metaverse, you're actually physically drawing the user in. You're physically putting the, the, the user inside of a world that you have created, which is not the real world. The question isn't so much, will it be antisocial, right? So for example, if there are two people who are in the, uh, in the VR, uh, in the, in the metaverse and actually talking or interacting with each other a lot, uh, from, you know, across the world, then yes, they, they are, you know, they are, they are engaging in some kind of social engagement. The problem is if somebody decides to wear the, the VR headset all day, and be in that old world and doesn't interact with anybody in the real world, it will distort their sense of reality. So it's really personal responsibility that is to, to blame, not the technology. There is no technology that causes, I mean, right now also with mobile phones, you know, uh, there are people who are buried in their mobile phones a lot and uh, you can't really blame mobile phones for that. It's, uh, it's, there's a lot of personal responsibility involved. Okay. Okay. So I have one, uh, a, a couple of questions here. For sure. you. One is that I was looking at, I was reading a couple of days ago, uh, you know, on this LA film festival, which also had in, uh, I think 2018, they had, uh, 
immersive storytelling as one of one of the uh, you know exhibits mm. and in that there was this very interesting thing i was reading which uh, you know uh, had a panel discussion with some filmmakers and people who created immersive content and one of them dr courtney cockburn uh, she had this very interesting observation says that uh, you know people will recall the experience almost like they it was a dream for them right yeah because it's an immersive experience and yeah. the possibility of feeling i'm actually quoting here the possibility of feeling like it actually happened to you is one of the most powerful things and potentially one of the most problematic things about vr yeah you it know, is so what, what is the what is the take there i mean for a it's deeply immersive it is directly yeah. impacting the mind it is which is why with you know with great power comes great responsibility so uh, it's uh, incumbent on on everybody to make sure that uh, this this additional and like to use the word power but yeah additional power that is being given to um the content creators and the content distributors is not misused i mean one of the biggest problems that is going to come about is in uh, when you are live streaming vr concerts and if it's ad supported right so almost every vr headset does what is called iris tracking where they track where you where you are looking right and it also tracks pupil dilation so pupil dilation when the pupils are dilated is when person is receiving the most amount of visual information and it's also causes the visual information to be embedded the deepest right so there are people and there are advertisers who are actually asking broadcasters and distributors and streamers to track the pupil dilation of the users and serve the ad at that time when the pupil is dilated beyond x millimeters or whatever right so imagine forget about knowing which shop you went to and hence serving you ads you know say you went to a shop of you know sports gear so you keep getting sports ads on your google uh, thing forget that now they are actually tracking your biology you are being biohacked right for advertising so yes these things are going to be there this these things are going to be uh, a problem and uh, you know people have to track it but that doesn't mean that you you disregard the technology or the workflow entirely um it's it's a problem you have to solve it right along with all the good things we are hey, it will bring some nasty things along with it as would be evident with any technology that uh, that comes in i mean it's, yeah. it's, it's always the uncharted territory and you got to figure out what are the pluses and the minuses yeah. and i'm sure people will always keep digging out more and more you know you know innovative ways to exploit the technology if you want to call it that Yeah. Uh, that brings to another question which is uh, careers you know in terms of what are the kind of uh, career opportunities that this opens up so uh, quite a few one is uh, there is a, a a whole new substream of uh, live production for vr which uh, comes in um, there is a the the codecs for vr are unique they are different uh what you want to be be able to do is to be able to live uh, super it so put supers on it that are live and uh, you know stream it as uh, with as less latency and as less delay as possible so that's a whole specialized career um you have global concerts where literally like the second most expensive ticket for the concert is the vr ticket it's more expensive than the stands or than being far away from the stage um is a bjork concert that recently was a uh, thing where i think the most expensive ticket was $1000 and vr was i think $600 or something like that um so that's one second is uh, audio uh, for the first time you will have spatial audio where audio will not just be a scalar it will be a vector where you will be able to track where the audio is coming from and you will be able to project audio directional audio into the 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 earphones of the viewers right so there's it opens up a whole new world of ambisonic spatial audio design 
uh, both in live as well as uh, pre uh, as as well as filmed entertainment a uh, significant uh, use in uh, vr experiences so um in what's called lbe location based experiences so a, a whole new marketplace is opening up this is um, for people who are from mumbai there's something called smash that's here this is like that on acid right it's just far more crucial uh, just takes it to a whole other level so uh, that this is significant amount of uh, it uh, whole new area of vfx gives uh, stitching fine stitching vr edit for example you can become ed specialized editors in uh, for uh, 360 um uh, active so html5 based uh, programming for uh, for vr because you know as content starts to evolve you will not just be able to uh, you know just consume content but if you like a nice shirt that somebody is wearing you'll actually be able to glance at it blink twice and you know uh, that shirt gets added into your amazon shopping cart or you know your facebook shopping cart or whatever um so it's a, it's a whole new it just it the the interactivity the immersion the framelessness it just adds a whole new dimension many 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 new careers in many many new areas writing pre visualization it takes previous to a whole new level almost all films in india now that are uh, 50 crores or above are doing their previews in vr because it really enables the director to get a, a very good spatial idea of what the location or what the set is going to be like and how to plan his or her shots so that's a whole other ball game so yeah i mean the lot so how much of uh, you know this uh, i would say stream of um, learning is connected to the traditional stream and how much of it is going to be completely ground up uh, you know something that's going to be completely new and uh... so there it the vr as a stream itself should be ground up completely right but it will borrow from existing pipelines just like when television came around television as content concept was from the ground up serialized appointment viewing had never been done before in the history of human kind the only content that was done was large format content on the big screen which is back then was about an hour at most right but appointment viewing same thing when digital content came about uh nobody had done ultra short format content uh so same thing with vr it will be content will be structured from the ground up but concepts of direction don't change lighting don't change framing composition screenwriting don't change editing don't change um uh, streaming concepts are the same as as uh, digital um your production design remains the same uh, vr you know your vfx remains the same your acting remains the same actually actually acting goes back to the days of theater of stage because you are always in frame the you are you know you're never out of frame just like it happens even if you're not delivering the dialogue on stage you are always in frame you always have to be in character exactly the same thing in vr so uh, it it draws from a lot of existing workflows and pipelines but as a content uh, structure it's completely it has to be rebuilt from the ground up so a lot of the existing like i mean the interesting thing that you mentioned about actors and uh, you know the performers there's a lot of like unlearning and relearning that will probably happen oh yeah yeah yeah, as yeah well. very much so from very very much so very much so um directors need to uh, like i said completely reevaluate how you know this this thing that directors used to do is completely redundant now because there is no frame you right. have to create the frame in the user's head so instead of doing this spend time in uh, directing attention in learning how to direct attention and there are theories there are cognitive sciences for example right cogsci the mind the study of the mind will take a whole new meaning in filmmaking right it will just not be narrative anymore it will also be immersive right you're talking biology right so yeah i mean quite a few areas so uh, i mean the where does 
tactile fall into all of this because you know the in a, in a in an experience yeah it's a consumption it's a, it's one of the consumption uh, content consumption avenues so there's sight there's sound the smell that rehman is doing i mean i don't know if you ever got a chance to experience le musk in the full in the pod with the smells and all so fabulous experience right so the sight there's that is being blocked you're wearing a headset there's a sound you're you know you've got that there is smell there is touch which is tactile which happens in lbes so a lot of lbes actually have body suits where you're feeling it so if somebody is shooting at you you're actually feeling the 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 thing being shot and yeah i mean i hope they don't introduce taste where you know you have to shove something in your mouth and some weird taste comes in i hope that never happens but you know it well, there is there is some development on that front i think in japan where they've kind of uh, developed this thing where you can actually taste something off a television screen yeah they are they are, they are uh, there is some work happening yeah. there on that so, front as well i think japan is where also where a significant amount of deployment of vr has happened along with body suits in uh, first person porn so about 60 to 70% of the vr industry right now is funded by that mm-hmm. okay so uh, this this also takes me to a, i mean i don't know if there are people who got questions got questions yeah please just, away, just I mean, raise your hand or whatever just yeah, unmute please, yourself and ask i have like 5 minutes before i need to run okay i guess not so yeah. let me let me just throw one more, let me let me throw just one more at you which is uh, uh, from this whole experience that you showed about the basketball and the sports related issues mm. now isn't that still uh, kind of directed in a way because you have limited amount of viewpoints at this point yeah. in time yeah uh, and the experience of actually being in a live arena versus an experience of watching it you know as kind of simulated environment uh, it's not simulated i mean it's real yeah it's a, uh, okay if you want to call it real i mean it's like there's a difference in between in, in of having a difference. you know having a person sit yeah, next yeah, to you yeah, completely you know, the so whole it's crowd a, it's, so it's in between it's yeah. it's in between it's in between watching it at home in a flat screen tv right. and being there it's right. obviously like not it cannot be like being there but right. it's the closest thing possible without leaving your house right so i right? i can see the i can see the upside to it which is that everybody yeah. now got ringside uh, you view uh, and you can got... see and you can change where you want yeah. to go you want to go behind one basket you want to go behind one goal post you want to be at the owners box experience so uh, uh, over the years uh, sky has been adding more and more and more cameras now now for example there is a vr camera in between the uh uh you know when the players football players are standing to come out right there's a vr camera right there in between chotu sa camera hai right right or uh, there is a the there is a there's you know uh, talk of putting vr cameras in at the where the coach coaches boxes at the edge of the coach box right so that gives people a, a completely unique experience that they've never had even in broadcast right right and the immersion does happen now oh yes you don't actually feel the you know the basketball player sweat falling on you like it would if you were there but you know it's the next best thing and you know right. people are willing to pay good money for it uh, that apart what does it do to the you know the whole broadcast uh, let us say pipeline or broadcast industry per se because it creates it it actually helps it because it creates a whole new value volume uh, level right so see right now in any business there is a value volume level so free is the most number of people worst quality right and then as you move up so being there obviously is the highest quality but then you have to pay the most right this creates an in between so the the most premium uh, say it's a boxing match it's a boxing game which is uh, being streamed on HBO and you're paying $50 to watch it and uh, being there at the boxing at the MGM Grand Arena is say $1000 i don't mind paying $200 if i can have a uh, a view from one of the rings one of the corners where i'm you know 6 inches away from you know whoever whichever boxer there is right so uh, it creates this whole in between ecosystem 
you know money uh, kind of finance it helps them actually because it gives them more money to produce better quality content okay right see right now the the you can have a home theater you can have a big screen that's it uske aage kya kar sakte hai nothing right this gives you that what next people right. who are willing to pay right 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 awesome so um, i don't know whether there are any more questions dada is here if you got something to shoot off uh... i think this is, this is absolutely just to listen to this is pretty mesmerizing lot of questions which i don't think we can accommodate right now unless it's going to be premature on my part without understanding it with a little more you know understanding of its clarity but uh, pretty fascinating i'm just hoping that you know this whole experience of the experience of experiencing whatever uh, these things are around us they happen with lesser and lesser of uh, obstructive variable yeah that's you know, the the, example, the goal yeah so the goal is the way you just try and remember what your mobile phone was in 2013 would you ever even think of watching a 10 minute video yeah, on your mobile yeah, phone yeah, yeah. it was a effing brick but i still love that nokia you know that antenna wala nokia ha, that used to get actually love that right it in was fact, a brick my, my concern is about factory yeah you right so see see the evolution from that to this yeah yeah that's exactly how your vr headsets are going to evolve it's not going to be this big fat shoe box on your head anymore i mean if you already yeah, see yeah. headsets have gotten sleeker and sleeker and sleeker and sleeker right and lighter yeah, yeah. you don't need controllers yeah. anymore there's pinch and uh, gesture control that's that's happening right you do this I, and just, uh, it flips yeah chetan i was just, I, i just got reminded about uh, the earliest six sense uh, you know something which the google uh, spectacles Uh, six sense device with, yeah right? yeah six sense devices i I'm, i was thinking of the integration of something on those yeah. lines to be so happening so oculus 2 than that like o- oculus 2 for example yeah. you don't need they have controllers but you don't need controllers you can pinch to 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 select if you want to flip the page you can two fingers do that and it it, it flips the page so they dheere dheere aayega aayega oculus 2 right now if you want to wear it and walk around you can because there are cameras built in it's horrible quality video it's not it's nowhere close to what your eyes would see but you can you won't bump into things i mean i'm not recommending that to anybody but you know market mein mat pen ke jao oculus but ho sakta hai agar aapko jana hai to ja sakte ho right so cool theek hai so uh, thank you once again i think uh, most welcome extremely uh, informative yeah i think the past two have been very different from the typical animation and vfx no things. but these are these are also things that we need to uh, address and these are things that uh, yeah. you know we we always like to come out with the you know stuff that uh, uh, too much of ev- too much of everything is is bad so uh, you know once <laughs> in a while you need a break and yeah. uh, just so the right part of the thing. very much a part of the media and entertainment industry and it's only Absolutely. going to grow absolutely in fact uh, w- one thing that uh, we are now trying to look at is also the whole nft space and uh, we hope to do a session on that mm. uh, to try and understand how artists can kind of you know uh, some have got on to the bandwagon and uh, you know a lot many more would like to but are clueless as to what to do so that would be an interesting session that we hopefully try and you know organize uh, very soon but uh, thanks once again thank you Most so welcome. much for your time and uh, for such a lovely session and uh, you know thank you to everybody else for uh, joining us on a saturday evening uh, hope to see can you those of you who are here would you mind switching on your yeah, cameras for a moment you can and switch on your cameras for a, for a, a quick, quick brief moment you can just oh delvin is here if you can <laughs> hi delvin wow long time good to see you delvin awesome. thank you all surel surabhi dishat uh, mahi bakit thank you all for joining in and uh, loads of the videos on youtube so please do catch up on them and chetan yeah lovely two sessions yeah completely enlightening and mazedar lots of new questions raised So, yes <laughs> thank you idea. so much okay bye all right bye bye everybody take bye care bye. see you have a nice weekend bye bye